Okay, I'd like to tell you about time constants for circuits. Um, time constants are used to um, indicate how fast a circuit discharges. Um, a DC, a DC, or, excuse me, an RC circuit either discharges or charges up. But it tells you kind of the rate at which something, char the, the RC circuits charge or discharge. Okay, let's review some of these graphs. Okay, so for a charging circuit, um, the Q across the capacitor, if it's charging, it's building. And so remember, it goes like that. And um, But the current in the resistor is um, actually decreasing as time goes by. The voltage across the capacitor, if the charge is building, it should match that because it's Q over C, that the voltage. And so it does. It matches it, and so it builds. And um, the voltage across the resistor um, should be matching the current because the current is times R is the voltage across the resistor. So there you have it. Whereas if you have a discharging capacitor, then the charge is depleting. So is the current in the resistor. It's depleting. So is the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, because the, the charge is depleting, the voltage should be depleting. And if the I is depleting, so should the, res the, the voltage across the resistor. Everything's depleting or, or, or decaying in a discharging capacitor. Okay, so, but if we do have a discharging capacitor, uh, you know, if you ask the question, how long is it going to take before it gets to zero? The answer is infinity. It's going to take an infinite amount of time. At least theoretically, it's going to take an infinite amount of time. And so, um, you know, so it doesn't matter, you know, some circuits might, might you know, get there might be much deeper or it might stretch out a lot. And so just saying that it's going to take an infinite amount of time to discharge doesn't really tell you how fast it's going to discharge. And so um, we have something called a time constant. Now, uh, in with radioactivity, we use half-life. You know, when, it, when something decays and, and it takes a certain amount of time for half of it to disappear, or to not disappear, but change into another material. And then another time for the, the same time for the next half to disappear and so on. That's, you know, because it, if we ask just how long will it take to disappear, the answer again would be, well, an infinite amount of time. But it, how much will it take for half of it to disappear? Well, this much time. Well, we do the same thing, except um, because this equation is equal to this. We we say, well, what happens when the time is equal to RC? So if I put in the time of RC, now you might think is is can is resistance times capacitance. Does that give you a time? It does. It gives you a time. And when you put in for T, if T equals RC, look at what happens mathematically. When I put that in, I get Q0 times E to the negative, and I'm going to put in RC divided by RC. Well, that's the same thing as Q0 times E to the negative 1. Well, E to the negative 1, that's the same thing as just Q0 over E. Now E is an irrational number, yeah, but it's very close to 3. It's 2.7 and, and it never ends, but it's uh, close to 3. So what you can think of this as is that when, when Q, if you do 1 over E, I think it's, point, it's a close to 0.37. So it's not quite a third, but it's 0.37 Q0. So after one time constant, you get 0.37 of the original charge, or I'm going to just say you have about a third of your original charge. Okay, so what that means is, um, let's say you have a, a circuit that looks like this. And let's say that um, this is 
two farads, that's a huge capacitance, and let's say this is um, 1,000 ohms. Just by multiplying these together, so the time, the time constant um, is going to be, we're going to make it a fancy T, sometimes that's called a tau, T-A-U, -A tau, and, um, and so that's equal to RC. Now look, the time constant is um, 2,000 seconds. So that means that if I know that, then I know that it's going to take 2,000 seconds to just get to a third of its original charge. And then if you wait an additional 2,000 seconds, it will get to a third of a third. So one-ninth its original charge. And then if I wait another 2,000 seconds, like 6,000 in all, it will get to a third of a third of a third, so 1 27th of its original charge. And so that's how you, that's how you do that. Okay, now with a growth graph, it's a little different. If we have a growth graph, say you're charging a capacitor and you want to know, you want to have an idea of how long it's going to take to charge. Well, this this equation is going to be Q final, not Q naught, because Q naught zero, but Q final uh, minus Q final e to the negative t over rc. We derived that in a previous video. So let's see what it will be. What will q be when you put in um, one time constant? So when what will q be, you know, you know how you write q as a function of time? Well, what if I put in for the time, I put in one time constant? Then um, let's see what you get. You get q final minus q final e to the negative, and if I sneak in, an, an, for t, if I sneak in rc, sure enough, this goes to q final minus q final e to the negative 1. See, the math is just so simple. It's so smooth when you use rc for the, the indicator for how, how long it's going to take. So you get e to the negative 1. Well, that's the same thing as q final minus q final over e. Or I could factor out a q final, and that's the same thing as 1 minus 1 over e. So, you know, if e is considered to be 3, just, you know, a ballpark figure, then that's 2 thirds. So what that means is that after one time constant, you'll it will take 2 thirds of the time to get to get, excuse me, after one time constant, so go over here to one time constant. If you go up and over, that is going to be um, two thirds of your final charge. Okay, this really isn't two thirds though. If you do one minus 0 0.37, it's 0 0.63 of the final charge. So that's what that is. So after one time constant, you get about two-thirds or 0.63 of the final charge. All right, thanks. Bye.